Hey guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I welcome you all in this video where we are going to discuss about the Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission. We will be looking at the World Giving Index. Also, we will be looking at the startup ecosystem report. So a lot is there in this video that can be of use for your upcoming RBI and SEBI examination. And guys, do pay attention to this thing that government schemes play a very important role in your ESI examination that is a part of your NABARD phase 2. So if any one of you who is preparing for NABARD phase 2, then this video will be useful for you also. Okay. On that note, let's begin this video. But before that, if you haven't subscribed our channel, then do subscribe and hit the bell notification. And the PDF of this session will be provided to you on the Telegram channel. The link of our Telegram channel is in description below. So you can uh, click on the link and join the group and get the PDF of this session and also the PDFs of our other sessions. So the very first news that we have as I mentioned is the Pradhan Mantri Digital Health Mission. So very briefly, let me introduce this mission to you. Guys, did you cover the National Digital Health Mission which was announced last year? If your answer is yes, then I would say you don't have to put an extra effort in understanding this mission because this is nothing but the same mission, National Digital Health Mission that has been launched Pan India right now. Okay. So National Digital Health Mission was announced last year and at that point of time it was launched in six union territories on a pilot basis. So what is the difference now if it was launched in, la in 2020 as in last year then why are we discussing it right now? Why is it being launched again? The reason is that right now it has been launched Pan India across the whole country. And secondly, the name of the scheme has been changed. Earlier, it was National Digital Health Mission. Still, it is also called the National Digital Health Mission. But the official name of this mission is Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission, Oblique Pradhan Mantri Digital Health Mission. Okay, so if you get the Pradhan Mantri Digital Health Mission in the question, Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission or National Digital Health Mission. Do not get confused because all of this make up one single khichdi. Okay, so all of this is the same. So now let's move into the details of this scheme. The very first thing I have already told you that it was announced in 2020 and at that point of time it was launched in six state, six union territories on a pilot basis. Can you guys tell me the names of all the six union territories in which this mission was launched last year? This is your question. Do mention it in the comment section below. Now, this mission is basically the hype regarding this mission is that it is going to provide you with the unique health ID and this health ID would be similar to the Aadhaar ID that we have. So it will be unique for every individual. So there are major three components of this mission. There are six, hain, but major three. Hain. Okay. Health ID, healthcare professionals registry and you have the healthcare facilities. Okay, so these are the three building blocks, we can say three major components of this national digital health mission. As I have mentioned it in the beginning that if you have covered it last year thoroughly and if you have been covering it regularly or revising it, then you won't find any kind of difficulty in understanding this thing because this is the same thing that they have announced last year. So there would be a national health ID card which will act as the repository of all your records or your all your medical records okay so that kind of digital id digital card will be provided to sorry card will be provided to you that will contain all your records medical records digitally okay so that is the basic benefit so here are the components of the pradhan mantri digital health mission ayushman bharat digital health mission one and the same thing okay so first is health account or health ID. It will contain all your personal health data. Guys, here you need to understand the basic uniqueness or the salient feature of this mission is that first of all, it is voluntary. So it depends on you whether you want to opt for the national health ID. 
secondly it is for every citizen earlier in ayushman bharat we had a target of covering 50 crore people across india under the scheme and provide them with the 5 lakh insurance benefit but right now what does this national digital health mission say that we are going to provide a unique digital health id to every citizen of india okay the third salient feature is that the information that you will provide on the platform will be based on your consent okay so if you don't want to provide the complete record or if you want to hide certain things which of of course would not be beneficial in your interest only but still if there is something that you do not want to share on this platform then you can not share because there is no obligation it is consent based secondly the sharing of data is also consent based if you don't want the medical practitioner to see your data he cannot see that data okay so it is purely based on the consent moving on to the next components so healthcare professional registry will be there healthcare facilities registries will be there so both of these things will help the citizens in locating and tracking the healthcare facilities and get the services in time next is e pharmacy so what will this e pharmacy do you can just upload your prescription here and get your medicines delivered at your home telemedicine consultation if you don't want to visit the doctor you can just uh, contact that doctor via video call or you can get the uh, um, you can get the medical advice via some phone call or whatever is the medium but that would be the digital medium okay healthcare information exchange and consent manager so this mechanism will be set up this is a new mechanism which was not announced last year okay so since last year it was on the pilot basis it was only announced right now we have been given the details therefore we are covering it in detail now what does this health information exchange or consent manager mechanism do it will basically approve the sharing of data now you would say that if it is consent based data then what uh, is the role of this exchange and what is he who is he or this mechanism to share our data so basically let me simplify it for example if i have treated myself for uh, diabetes in the apollo hospital in gujarat and then i get shifted to aims delhi okay so here the doctors of aims delhi need to check my details and that details will be provided via my health id card now i am giving the consent to the health professional he is uh, he is entering his professional id his uh, user id in the nthm platform and getting access to my health data and the approval mechanism is done by this within a fraction of a second okay you will better understand it by looking at this picture now this picture is for your understanding purpose only so for example if i am giving the consent to the doctor that okay you can just access my data one doctor which is in apollo hospital has already access to my data he has updated my data as well already the medical history now the other doctor which is in aims delhi if he wants to see the medical record my medical record then i will provide him the consent then that health Uh, that information will go to the health information exchange and consent manager and he will approve and then this doctor will be able to see my data by using his healthcare professional id okay so he has to use his own id in order to access my data which of course i will consent to okay so that is the basic idea behind setting up this health information exchange and consent manager so that the misappropriation of data can be stopped next is this unified health interface again i told you that these are the building blocks these are the pillars of this national digital health mission the health id pro healthcare professional registry health facility registry okay so how can we access how can we use the uh, these facilities in reality by using the mobile application so these are the mobile applications on um, ndhm health records app so this is the application which will help the providers the hospital the doctors as well as the citizens to access the health uh, data 
the medical record telemedicine again there would be an application that will facilitate telemedicine telecommunication e pharmacy there is there would be an application that will allow the buying and selling of uh, medicines and this is for the hospitals this is for the internal management of the hospitals so this is basically the unified health interface and here are the benefits of this mission so i'm going to read it out and very basic benefits here there is nothing much that you won't understand okay so what is the benefit of Digi national digital health mission for the citizens it will make access to healthcare services better it will also give an edge to the citizens in selecting their healthcare professional it will give an advantage to the citizens over selecting the hospitals which offer the services at a lower price and the fourth benefit is that the data of the citizens will be in the control of the citizens okay nobody can misuse or share your data okay so ease of doing for and what is the benefit for doctors it will facilitate ease of doing business for doctors because they will get all the medical history of the patient in an instant so obviously it is going to increase the ease of doing business for the doctors and hospitals better access to health services no need to carry medical records the sharing of data via health id can be done only with the prior consent of the id holder security confidentiality privacy of the health related personal information will be there citizens will be a click away from accessing the healthcare facilities it will be voluntary for citizens no obligation on you to get yourself enrolled in this id they can add only that information which they want okay so that is also a facility that is provided to you now in this picture you can see the benefits for the stakeholders the overall stakeholders that are involved in ndhm for example citizens the doctors or hospitals pharmacies diagnostic laboratories and health tech startups okay you can just read it out on your own there is nothing much that need any kind of explanation next is that a sandbox under this scheme has been launched in order to test the entire functioning or infrastructure of this mission and national health authority is the implementing agency of this mission it is also implementing the ayushman bharat scheme so guys that was all about the ayushman bharat digital mission okay i hope that you have understood it well and now let's move on to the next question which is the world's highest ev charging stations where is the world's highest ev charging station located kaza town Tallinn, Upasala, Tampere, and Kiruna. So these are the cities. These are the names of the cities. The right answer is Kaza town. Now, where is it located? It is located in Himachal Pradesh. So the country is India, which has the world's highest EV charging station. Highest refers to the location, which is uh, the highest. Okay. So this has been established by Pune-based EV charging infra startup Go Ego Network. So Go Ego Network is the name of the company that has established this EV charging station at Spiti Valley in Himachal Pradesh. Okay, and this we have already uh, we have already covered. India's vision is to become a hundred percent EV nation, electric vehicle nation by twenty thirty. What is India's rank in the World Giving Index twenty twenty one? So out of these rankings, India's rank is fourteen out of one hundred fourteen countries. Okay. Now, guys, Indonesia is the country that has topped this index, which is released by Charities Aid Foundation. Indonesia is the first. Kenya is second. Nigeria is third. Then you have Myanmar at fourth. Fifth is fifth. Uh, uh, Australia is at the fifth ranking. Ghana is at the sixth rank. New Zealand is at seventh rank, Uganda eighth, Kosovo ninth, Thailand tenth. Now you would be thinking that majority of these top ten countries are the countries which have a lower GDP than India. Then how come the countries, these countries, are having a higher position in this World Giving Index that is released by this organization? Okay, so guys, here you need to understand this thing that this index. measures the ranks the countries on three bases first is the donation monetary donation 
सेकेंड इज हेल्पिंग अ स्ट्रेंजर so these are the parameters of this index and third one is volunteering work so the percentage of population out of the total population the people who are willing to donate money the people the proportion of people who are uh, willing to helping us to help a stranger or to volunteer in some charity work the proportion of those people divided by the total population of one country uh, provides or becomes the ranking of the country okay that is why india has been put at the 14th rank in this index whereas countries like indonesia kenya uganda are above india however india's ranking is not at all bad because india has achieved a great rank it was earlier at 82nd ranking so the global rank for the past 10 years was around 80 82 and now india's ranking has improved to 14th so this is a very good achievement for india but still you need to understand that why these countries are ahead of india because here we are ranking giving the rank on the basis of the percentage of people divided by the total population of people the percentage of people who are willing to give who are willing to give their labor in social work or help a stranger or who are willing to donate money now so i have already told you 61% of indians help strangers 34% volunteered and 36% donated money in 2020 this is the data for 2020 year that's why india's ranking has improved bottom pe hai japan so in comparison to the total population of japan the proportion which is willing to give is very less therefore japan is at the 140 114th rank that is at the bottom of this index okay i have already told you the parameters moving on to the next index what is india's uh, best city in the global startup ecosystem uh, report 2021 so here the right answer is bangalore it is 23rd so basically this report has been released by startup genome in partnership with global entrepreneurship network total 140 ecosystems basically the places in general we can also say the cities which harbor the ecosystem for startups which are conducive to startups so they were ranked silicon valley has topped this index london and new york both are at the second position beijing boston are at the fourth and fifth position india's rank uh, basically bangalore is at 23rd and delhi is at 36th ranking so these are the two important and best cities for startups as per this report and here are the parameters performance funding con connectedness market reach resource, resource attraction exp experience and talent so these are the parameters now these are some of the additional facts or we can say the facts about some cities there were some highlighted cities in this index so let's have a look at them according to this index or report london is the most attractive destination to set up a tech startup outside of silicon valley so this can become a direct question in your phase 1 of rbi and sebi Bangalore and the surrounding state of Karnataka is the world's fourth largest technology and innovation cluster a very good news for india particularly for bangalore in the category for emerging ecosystem mumbai is at the first position kerala is the fifth asian ecosystem in affordable talent and india has produced 24 unicorns in 2021 as of august 2021 so these were some of the highlighted facts of this index which bank has launched hashtag use befikar campaign to spur expenditure in the festive season so out of these banks the right answer is rbl bank so rbl bank partnered with mastercard to launch this campaign in order to provide or spur or encourage people to spend more during the festive season there is nothing much that needs any kind of explanation do remember that this campaign has been joined by the vikrant messi vida bai chanu and ritesh deshmukh 
who has won the 2021 Global Goalkeeper Award from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So here the right answer is option D from Zile. Okay, so she was the former Deputy President of South Africa. She was also the Under Secretary General and Executive Director of UN Women. Okay, so do remember that she has held very important positions in her past. And right now she has won this award from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, the 2021 award was focused on leaders who have progressed towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, also remember that every year the focus shifts. For example, last year the focus was on individuals who performed well in or who basically contributed a lot towards improving the health infrastructure or helping others in the times of COVID-19. Okay, so every year the focus of the goal goalkeeper award changes okay therefore we need to know this thing that this year it was on leaders who has who have done a lot towards achieving the sustainable development goals now this is the mega award the global goalkeeper award there were three mini awards or we can say additional awards change maker award progress award campaign award so change maker award has been given to farooz fazer bithar who is from Bangladesh, Jennifer Kolpes from Colombia, Sata Sharif from Liberia. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope that you have understood each and everything that I have told you. And in case if you haven't understood anything, you can just ask me in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching the session and do not forget to join the Telegram group because there you will get the PDF of this session. Thank you.